Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely fantastic day. Ledger is currently offering free shipping on a number of their Ledger Nanos. They also have a number of new limited edition Ledger Nano Xs from the hundreds. Clay Nation and the Chalk Blade Edition as well as 10% off their Ledger Backup Pack. Their Ledger Family Pack S Plus, that's a long name, and their Ledger Family Pack X. While I do not work for Ledger, I am an affiliate and do have an affiliate link in the description below for those of you who are looking to secure your crypto. I've been using Ledger for a number of years now. I actually have multiple, multiple Ledgers. They're the only company that I personally trust. And oh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. When I tell you the words, this news was so ridiculously popular, it is not an under, I mean, it is the least amount of understatement possible. I'm going to give you the brief, and then we're going to go over it, because this is actually a very long time coming. This is like, I mean, like 500 years we've been waiting for this, actually. Blockchain solutions company Ripple has unveiled its intentions to launch a stablecoin pegged to the U.S. dollar aiming to boost liquidity on the XRP ledger. You don't understand. That one paragraph, sentence, is one of the most loaded things on this planet. Ripple as a company, I'm not sure how they did it. They've they've done extremely well for themselves. The the amount of the only word that fits here is adversity. And mud that has been slinged at this company over the course of the last like Eight, nine, ten years. Yes, Ripple has been around for that long. Has been absolutely monstrous. <clears throat> the craziest parts of it all is that any time that the company Ripple thought about launching or doing something on XRP, like the actual blockchain, they were more or less blocked by the SEC in some sort of way. This is, this is the significance of them getting the not a security for XRP. That kind of means the XRP ledger exists on its own. It's free floating. It may be associated with Ripple, but it is not Ripple. You should all understand that sentence as it was in basic English. The interesting part is that people have been, and I'm people within the Ripple space, the XRP community, whatever words you want to give them, have been asking for something like this for a while. Because other coins have done the exact same thing. It's, 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 it's quite easy to be able to do so. The issue is that the SEC has made this an issue for a very long time. The stablecoin market is gigantimous. I mean, it is absolutely behemoth-like in its size. And it's only going to continue to grow as billions of new people actually get into the space. The fascinating part about all of this is that this is incredibly good news for XRP the coin. For those of you who may be unaware, XRP is kind of like the original burn coin. While other coins, Ethereum, I believe Cardano, etc., etc., Shiba Inu, what's the other one? Terra Luna Classic have burn mechanisms that take place as the coins are being used and moved across the blockchain. XRP has had that from the get-go. So every time there is a transaction with XRP, XRP in the background is also burned. That's the significance of us hearing last year and the year before about the number of banks and the institutions who want to begin to use XRP to send money around the world. They would also then be burning XRP. The significance also lies in the number of, uh, whatchamacallit, other banks and institutions we've heard about over the last couple of years. We also heard from the people from Ripple that they're also working with a number of central banks around the world who also want to move money through a system. 
and they're choosing to use the XRP ledger. The thing that makes it perfecter is having a stable coin on top of it because it does a number of things. Well, actually one gigantic thing. It allows the extra movement of money through the XRP ledger. It creates an enormous amount of liquidity. It burns a huge amount of XRP and it also makes a way for other people who are looking to send money through stable coins and or when trading cryptocurrencies to also give an additional boost of liquidity to the XRP blockchain as this stable coin is actually used. This news was everywhere. It was not somewhere. I was, you could not, I was clicking around and I was like, what in the world was going on? I mean, it was popping up nonstop. It's all that people were talking about as like the, I, you don't understand. I was so confused. I was like, where did this come from? All over the place. In a statement released on Thursday, Ripple revealed its intention to introduce a stablecoin token linked to the US dollar, ensuring a consistent one-to-one -one value ratio with the US dollar. This initiative will be supported by a combination of US dollar deposits, short-term government securities from the United States, and corresponding cash reserves as shared by Ripple. I know this sounds uh the, the words not nonsensical almost not important this is probably the most important part out of all of this uh because for those of you who were not here a number of years ago when facebook bookface bookface was trying to make their own stable coin and then they ended up calling it libra and had all these other names for it the reason why it was mainly shut down not only mimicking the us dollar also uh they would have become the de facto largest bank on the planet overnight. Their stable coin, the coin that they were launching, was backed by foreign currencies. And can you guess who didn't like that? Yeah, it was the United States. They were completely over it about a good 17 hours later. I, I, I think the news, if I remember correctly, I, I think it was backed by uh, euros, the yen, uh, some other like government bonds that were not the U.S. I think some Swiss-based securities in the U.S. was like, no, we can't, we can't, we can't have any of that. So this is why when they announced this thing, they had to announce U.S. dollar deposits, things from the U.S. government, securities from the U.S., and cash reserves. We can also assume also in U.S. dollars. It has to explicitly be we will be using the U.S. dollar and not try to circumvent it in any sort of way. Additionally, the firm highlighted that these financial underpinnings will undergo frequent reviews by an external accounting entity. That is a, a, a nod, I guess, to Tether uh, because people continuously lose their minds whenever there's a stable coin. And, and I don't even think it's the people per se. I think it's larger entities who also are trying to launch their own stable coins in an effort to try and discredit other coins that are out there. They said, and I do quote, this is a natural step for Ripple to continue bridging the gap between traditional finance and crypto. This was said by Mr. Garlinghouse. Institutions entering this space are finding success by partnering with compliant Crypto native players and Ripple's track record and resiliency speaks for itself as we launch new products and acquire companies through multiple market cycles. And quote for those of you who've been missing it, Ripple has been doing extremely well. Like not like kind of good, like, oh, wow. Like, you know, like you feel bad for them though. Like they're doing incredibly well with their acquisitions and their partnerships. And usually, usually one does not create a stable coin unless they know that they have outside sources who are also going to be using this as well. This is going to be one of the, if you want to talk about XRP getting back to a dollar quite swiftly, this is going to be one of the main catalysts, especially moving forward as people will be talking about more consistently now exactly how much money is XRP is being burned per transaction and all, you know, you see what's going on. Yeah. No, this was nuts. I was actually a little taken back at how many like places I found this. Every website I went to, everyone was talking about it. Everyone was talking the implications for it and where this was going to go. 
this is going to be huge. And they, 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 they played it kind of correctly because they're doing it now as opposed to in, in a couple of years. They need to do this now because as long as Bitcoin is a thing, the stablecoin market will probably exist in some form or capacity as well as people are trading. And especially as we're seeing um, a lot of other trading happening with stable coins as well. I don't see it. Where is it? Oh boy, it's in one of these articles. Uh, basically, they're planning on, from what I've read, they're planning on having it on um, the XRP blockchain and also putting it on top of Ethereum as well for an extra level of liquidity. And I assume we will also be hearing in the future that they're also planning on putting this on top of other chains as well as one of the easiest ways to... There we go. It will initially be available on XRP and Ethereum with plans for expansion to additional networks and DeFi protocols in the future. It's kind of the same exact way that Tether and Circle and all the other ones are doing it. I mean, it's only like really like three of them we can talk about are currently doing it. You put it on top of other chains to make sure that there's extra additional usage. People may not necessarily want to move from a chain that they're using all the time when they're building stuff like that. So you put it on every single chain. You continue to also mint there. It also increases the uh, decentralization, if you will, air quotes, of the actual stable coin in question. Cannot, cannot be understated how popular this was. I did not see a date anywhere. I do not know when this is going to launch. But boy, howdy, this is going to be absolutely great for XRP and their entire ecosystem. And I can only assume, last point, they probably were having some discussions with a number of lawyers to see that if this can actually even go through. But it appears that the SEC's power, if any, at this point is, is constantly waning. So, yeah, this was what I mean... This blew all the other news out of the water, especially anything Bitcoin. Uh, that's the Ripple XRP Brad Garlinghouse stablecoin news. Yeah. Let's move on. In uh, monster news, 48, 48 U.S. lawmakers have sent a letter to the U.S. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler asking him to clarify whether Ether is a security or not. This is a saga that just needs to end. I find it, I'll use the, the S word, I find it rather shameful that this has been going on for so long within the U.S. It it's It's a bit of a... You know, one of those like sad look down at the floor moments where the U.S. could have been like the master of this. In I mean, literally the entire cryptocurrency market. But Mr. Gensler has had other plans from the very beginning. Uh, besides regulating by enforcement, he's also just done an absolutely egregiously terrible job. I know that there's another universe somewhere where Hester Pierce has taken over the SEC, and I mean, there's literally no problems and they're never in the news. A number of companies, dozens of companies, have been asking the SEC and Gary Gensler for over a decade now for some type of regulation, and the SEC refuses, no, Gary Gensler refuses to do so. The topic at hand right now is that people are salivating I mean foaming at the literal mouth for an Ethereum ETF an ETF sir the idea being if Bitcoin did well is doing well Ethereum's going to absolutely skyrocket if this ends up going through this also doesn't even get close to the rumors that we're also hearing rumors about a Litecoin ETF somewhere in the works as well all we literally need is a yay or a nay from Mr. Gensler as to if this is or is not a security. It's really not that difficult. We know his thoughts on it, but from my perspective, having been in this market for 13,000 years, what I think it is is that, now hear me out here, I do not know, I'm not in any of these meetings, I am not privy. However, suitcases full of money, something's going on. 
because he would have mentioned explicitly what was going on before, but we're currently at this really weird crossroads where he's like folding his arms and doesn't really know what to answer. I assume that any crypto lobbying group, company, peoples, um, are probably having talks with him consistently. It is abundantly clear that none of these coins are securities. None of them. And I can say that safe, like none of them are securities. And I can even, I can even say surely, uh, because you want to know how I know? Because every other country that has an SEC has declared that these coins are either commodities and or currencies. You can look it up. Currencies are not to be confused with legal tender. Like they don't not they they they, they don't have the same basis as that country's fiat currency. But they say that these are a digital form of currency and they are regulated as such. It is only within the U.S. of A. and because of Mr. Gary Gensler that we are currently in this situation. And as such, we have seen that there are a number a number of politicians within the United States who for years have basically, I'm sure, I, I assume he, he, he gets the most uh, interesting letters from his, um, from his colleagues. Uh, people have literally been saying, just give us an answer years ago. Because for those of you who do not know, a security classification for Ethereum while for three and a half weeks would be detrimental to the price until the masses realize that a security would simply allow literal ether to be bundled up and actually be traded on stock exchanges <clears throat> as other securities are stocks and bonds and mutual funds and ETFs. But it would also only make it easier to actually get an ETF from it as well as the, e as the SEC would be overlooking Ethereum as a security and therefore, they'd be able to completely push through an ETF. But the security classification is something that people don't want because it shows or could show that something is not as decentralized as previously stated before. But this would also just be a form of market manipulation by Gary Gensler trying to do exactly what he did to Bitcoin and try to do to XRP by simply stating that the SEC has control over something that they did not create and do not have control over. They do not and would not have control over the network. They do not and would not have control over people who are staking their coins. And they do not have control over the network. I'm not sure if I made that part abundantly clear. They said the negative repercussions of the SEC implicitly or directly classifying ETH as a digital asset security will cascade throughout the digital asset marketplace. Both in the short and long term, people are afraid that basically if you can kind of hit the queen over the head with a stapler, I don't know, as Bitcoin would be the king, Ethereum would be the queen, then any other jesters inside the room could also be knocked out as well. It would kind of tumble down and Gary, Glen I'm going to say Glary Glensler would feel far more empowered in his, you know crusade to try and take down the cryptocurrency space. 48 lawmakers sent a letter to SEC, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> In the letter, the Congress members raised concerns about the classification of Ether, particularly following an announcement by Prometheum Inc. that its subsidiary would offer custody services for ETH to institutional clients later this month. Gary Gensler we have heard as the public is apparently sending out letters to anything, anything that deals with any company that deals with Ether, has an Ether product in some sort of way. And, and allegedly, from what we've heard, he's not only trying to get the companies in trouble, trouble, but he's also trying to make it seem as if because there are companies building stuff on top of Ethereum, that therefore Ether has to be a security. It's just exhausting. It's um The problem is is that like this will never end as long as and it's not just Gary Gensler because he will be replaced by someone else who's also a monster unless we get Hester Pierce. No matter what happens within this space there's always some kind of a struggle. And I initially believed maybe it was the SEC pretending 
like, you know, hey, we need to do this to like let people know that they really deserve all these things that we're giving them. You know, the SEC, I knight you and say, hey, you can do this and blah, 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 kind of thing. But now I think it's just like like a like a really like power hungry, like money struggle kind of thing where the SEC just won't regulate. And this is what it's kind of led to. I don't know if these 48 lawmakers hold any weight in any sort of way. You know, Gary Gensler has literally come up against like billionaire titans and he hasn't uh, give the flying fluff. But yeah, so uh, the time is 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 a dwindling as far as um, it's was it the, the middle of May? The middle of May is supposed to be the time frame for the realistic yay or nay from the SEC about Ethereum um, ETFs. We'll see what ends up happening. And I shudder to think who's going to take over the SEC after Gary Gensler because he's just been spectacular. That's the SEC news. <gasps> Moving along. Also in... Yay! News. A lot of companies keep talking about layer two solutions, and I don't really know what's going on. Van Eck, the global investment manager, has recently released a $1 trillion base case for Ethereum's layer two solutions by 2030. The layer two solutions are expected to surpass the main blockchain in revenue generation for addressing scalability issues. Back in 2017, 18, Ethereum was supposed to have all the upgrades that it currently has right now. Yes, you heard that correctly. For whatever reason, we've gone over this before. I am not a coder. I, I, I don't do any of that. So I don't know exactly how long it takes to create a world computer, but I assume it takes a while. So as people have been waiting for Ethereum to get to the illustrious million transactions per second, and I mean, we're still waiting for, you know, 100K, but that's also besides the point. We've seen layer two solutions uh, popping up, the most famous one being Polygon. I, I think there's also Arbitrum and a bunch of, I think Avalanche is also another one as well. But Polygon usually ends up making like the most news, if you will. The last two weeks... I don't know exactly what's going on, but everyone has become fixated on the idea of layer two and layer three solutions. That was in another video. We have barely, we have barely gotten layer two solutions right. So the idea of layer three solutions is just like, please have several seats because it doesn't make any sense what you're talking about. On that note, the optimism has begun to rise in the idea of what layer two solutions are going to be able to do for the wider cryptocurrency market as long as Bitcoin's main chain continues to only do maximum three to five transactions per second. And as long as we currently are seeing, I think it's several hundred, isn't it now not several hundred transactions per second on Ethereum. That was one of the other updates that we got. The problem is air quotes is we're still not as as robust as other chains. So, I mean, sure, why not? I really don't know what more to say about this. This was also relatively popular. I think it's because of the number one trillion. They're expecting the layer twos for Ethereum to also eventually collectively be worth a trillion dollars as well because of the amount of value that allows or is passing through them and what it's going to do for the scalability of the actual blockchain. Because realistically, by 2030, we are probably still maybe only going to have five to 10,000 transactions per second for Ethereum. So cool. I, maybe it's because of Van Eck. I'm not really sure, but this was, like I said, it was relatively popular. It was in the news. It was all over the place. The one trillion dollar Ethereum layer twos. Sure, fun, awesome. We're getting all these crazy 2030 price predictions now. For those of you who haven't been seeing them or somehow managed to miss them, uh, of all these coins, like literally, like skyrocketing in price. There was somebody. I mean, this has been mentioned once. Once. Somebody mentioned earlier this year, it was around January or February, that they're expecting a 100,000 Ether 
by around 2030. I mean, it seems believable. I, I, you know, I don't know what more to say. It seems, seems relatively like something that could happen. That's the Van Eck is saying that layer twos on Ethereum could have a trillion dollar base. Like, you know, more, they'd be worth more than a trillion. Okay. All righty. Let's move on. Also in, yay, I can't, I can't believe it. Global Digital Asset Exchange, they're called Crypto, the website, is gearing up to launch their retail trading services in South Korea on the 29th of April. According to an announcement made by the company on Tuesday, the move comes after Crypto's acquisition of locally licensed crypto exchange OKBit back in 2022, which is now winding down their services. Uh, we don't hear as much as much. They're still there about them as previously before. But South Korea was a juggernaut in this cryptocurrency space, as was Japan. You've heard me say it before. A lot of companies have been looking to enter further into the Asian market because that's where a lot of the money is. That's why you saw all the hype before about the ETFs. Are they launching? I think they're launching uh, within Hong Kong. So Hong Kong has a lot of money. South Korea and Japan are known for like basically ruling the cryptocurrency market. We had news a couple of weeks ago about the, the kimchi premium being back, et cetera, et cetera. So there's basically a lot of money to be made. And I'm very excited to see what the metrics are going to be. Because uh, once again, we have not gotten to the having yet. But when we're actually there, we're going to see because the way that the cryptocurrency markets work in a lot of other countries, and I mean also just logically, uh, is that they the crypto exchanges only have what Bitcoin they can acquire. But in South Korea's uh, way, they can literally only, as far as we know, use crypto exchanges that are licensed by the country. So, I mean, it's like only a handful of companies. And as such... These companies, the crypto exchanges, have to fight to literally get whatever Bitcoin they can to put on the exchange. But the issue is every time that we have any type of spike in price, because there's so few Bitcoin in South Korea on these crypto exchanges, uh, there's like a heavy premium on Bitcoin's price. And this is why they stopped all the arbitrage a couple of years ago with people basically... Uh, buying it for air quotes cheap on Coinbase, sending it to South Korea, selling it there for like $15,000 profit and all these other crazy things that were going on. But the premium exists. So the news is literally uh, that crypto, the website, is going to be launching in South Korea. They said, we are incredibly excited to be launching the crypto app for retail users in South Korea. A market of tremendous importance to the growth of our business and one in which consumers are very interested in crypto. You'd be shocked to uh, to know there are a lot of places around the world that are actually as into crypto as the U.S., if not more. There are a lot of places. That's why I keep reminding everyone. We keep getting BlackRock news. BlackRock did, and I'm like, no, 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 no. It's a, It's far Far more than just BlackRock. There's a lot of money from around the world that's entering this market. There are a lot of silent buyers. People are accumulating massive amounts of Bitcoin right now. And I just want everyone to pay attention. Mm, yeah. I think that is going to do it for this video. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, <clears throat> wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.